So this is my flexible solar panel setup on the top of my Lance 1575. I left this big gap in the middle, it's big enough to actually accommodate one additional uh, panel. These are 100 watt panels from uh, Rich Solar. Um, but I didn't really want to put a panel there because of the shade caused by the AC unit. That sometimes it will you know, cause a problem. So I wanted to use flexible solar panels instead of the glass solar panels um, because of the weight. I just wanted to keep the weight down as much as possible. Also, I wanted to minimize the sort of aerodynamic drag that you get. I mean, obviously with some of these other bigger items on the top of the roof, maybe it doesn't make a big difference, but it was mainly the weight that I wanted to keep low. Um, I've got these uh, connected in series uh, because I have a um, MPVT uh, controller so I can have a nice high, the higher voltage and then it gets dropped down for my 12 volt uh, lithium setup that I have. Um, I can also remove these if I want by disconnecting these screws. And I can take the panels off in the event that one of them fails. Or if I'm parked somewhere where I'm getting a lot of shade on the roof, I could take them down and, and put them somewhere else on the ground if I wanted to. Um, also, my hope is, is that um, this small air gap that I've created here will help you know, keep, keep the panels stay a bit cooler. Uh, I shouldn't get any problems with water getting underneath the panels like I've seen uh, from other people. And I've also tried to, I don't know if I've been successful uh, in all areas, I tried, there's something right in the middle there, uh, maybe if I can, yeah, um, to try and lift the panel up to keep the water sort of flowing off the edges, but I can already see in the front there's a tiny bit of a sag. Um, so I might need to put something else underneath there if it becomes a problem with the water pooling on the panels. Um, but other than that, I'm pretty happy with the setup so far um, and uh, sort of interested to see how things go uh, when, uh, when I'm out and about. So now we can get a much better look at the actual wiring. So hanging down right in the rear far corner is the cables from the solar panels and they ran and they were hanging off that wire. They're actually both hanging down the back here, so I had to pull them out and then I marked them up in terms of which one was the actual one coming straight from the solar panel and which one was going to the battery. Um, and now my plan is, and you can actually see, look, there's the panel where they sort of pre, I guess, route out the area for the, um, the Go, Go Solar um, charge controller, but I decided not to go with that. But what I'll probably do is install my solar controller either above or below um, and then my circuit breakers up there as well. Okay so this is the solar insulation in the controller so I cut this and I'm going to add a panel there. That bundle of wires is just um, connected to the DC output of the controller because I want to add additional um, DC output and so we've got the controller sitting on the ball got the two uh, circuit breakers one for the positive panel and one for the positive battery and label them up uh, it's connected at the back hanging on the wall back right there you can see the solar wires back there but yeah this is all working pretty nicely and I've got pretty easy access uh, there as well. Okay, so instead of having the solar controller there, cut a hole right here. Oh, that thing that opens. And then you can see I've got my controller and then also my circuit breakers.
Okay, first step for preparing the, the roof is I'm just going to wash it with some soapy water and then let it dry and then I have some uh, proper roof cleaning sort of solvent I guess uh, to make sure that the um, the Eurobond stuff I'm using is going to stick well. So I clean the roof, at least the area of the roof that I'm going to stick to with this and to be honest I thought after using soap and water the roof was pretty clean but um, I can definitely feel the difference if it just feels like it just feels like it's going to stick better to this, to a roof cleaned with this, so I think it was worth it. So this is what I'm going to use um, to create sort of the mounting system I've got for my um, uh, solar panels. It's called Trex Trim. It's like a plastic, so it's never um, going to rot. Uh, it's pretty light. It's not super light, it's pretty light. Um, and it's thick enough that it's going to give a nice air gap between the roof and the solar panel. Okay, so I've cut it down to the width I want, um, and with uh, with my miter saw, just at a 45 degree angle. Now I'm going to cut the lengths I want uh, with my table saw. You know, to be honest, you could do all this with a circular saw, though. So also just cut down this small aluminum channel uh, that I found in Home Depot in the Thailand section. I'm going to add it to the front here because this is going to be the front of my travel trailer. So what I didn't want is the wind catching under here as I drive along. Maybe it wouldn't, but I just want to be on the safe side. And then this is going to slot underneath there um, to hold it in place. So I just set up a little jig here to try and get these a consistent diameter. This is um, this was going to sit on. I've left this to be about an inch wide, so that um, we got a good surface contact with the, the arm with the solar panel. And then also this makes this about two and a half inches wide, which means I can put two strips of half inch, uh, sorry, uh, one inch wide um, double stick ether bond on the back of that. Okay, so here's my general idea laid out. So using these to go in the back of the material because I didn't want to drill any holes in my roof. Then I'll put this. So then what I'll do is I'll put double-sided uh, tape ether bond on this back here and then I'll put the tape over the top to really seal it down so that's going to be pretty solid and then and by the way when so that's the end ones and the middle ones they're just down in the middle because I haven't got much roof space um, so they have to be tight to the end so then you line it up put the washer on I'm not sure if I really need this but um, I don't see the harm in it necessarily. And then these together like this. And then I'm just going to be able to screw it down. I haven't tightened it up. Uh, but generally that's the stack up. And I think it's going to hold it down pretty securely. So the nice thing is, I just added the double sided ether bond. So I was worried that this, you know, how it stands out proud a little bit would be a problem, but once the ether bond's on there, it actually makes it very stable because it's basically the same height, which is great. So this is the underside. So I've got them screwed on. I haven't got this will be the double sided tape that I'll put on all of them. See how it goes. Okay, so this is the double sided tape before I take it up and stick it. I've cleaned the areas of the roof. I'm going to position this and then I'm just going to pull, pull this away, stick it down. Then I'll remove the panel and then I'll um, stick it down with additional Euron. So this is how it's looking. I just took the panel off because I'm going to. 
put some more ether bond over the top of this. But although these feel pretty solid, I mean, driving down the highway at you know, 55 or a little bit faster maybe, I just don't want the panel to, to pull off. Also, I can tell in some places the roof just isn't flat enough to, for the double-sided tape to really adhere. So I think this ether bond over here is going to be a really good idea. So just before I put this uh, ether bond on, I just want to show this aluminum strip I've got here. It's really just, you know, it's the wind. This is the front of the trailer as the wind comes up. I just didn't want the panel lifting. Um, it seems to work pretty nicely. The panel slips in but underneath here. What I'm going to do is just put this oops, just over the top, just slightly here, um, so that it will nicely hold it down. So this is the final setup for the panel. So the ones in the middle, these one, this one and this one, that is just to you know prevent the uh, panel from bowing inwards. It's not going to be held down at all. And then you know, these two, these two, and then this long strip both have the connection points that we're going to screw into. So now I'm going to connect the panel. Okay, so here is my flexible solar panel installed on top of my Lance 1575. So why did I want a flexible panel? Because well, I know there's some downsides, I know the reliability isn't as good. But um, I wanted the flexible panel because I needed to keep the weight down as much as possible. So... Uh, but I looked at a few um, you know, videos online, saw some of the drawbacks, and so I wanted to um, be able to remove this if I ever had a warranty issue, um, because I've seen people stick them down and then need to rip them all up, and that is a pretty horrible process. So now with these, I can just unscrew them and um, be able to swap out the panel if I needed to. Also, being that it's stuck to the roof, if I really wanted to, um, I could be at a site where I was being shaded and I could just un disconnect these and then uh, put the panels elsewhere. Also, um, it worried me that there's no air gap if you install it right on the roof. Um, so I wanted to lift it up a little bit, uh, add this air gap so that it wouldn't heat the travel trailer underneath. And then also, um, I didn't have to worry about water getting underneath and then causing issues like I've seen with some other, other uh, installations. Um, so this is how far I've got. I just put one 100 watt panel on at the moment. I'm going to put another one down at the end. Um, and uh, yeah, hopefully this will stay on my roof when I'm driving down the road and then also uh, end up providing the benefits I was hoping for.